Hello to all the participants of the China International Credit Conference 2021. It's a pleasure to deliver this presentation today. I'm going to talk about the Chilean walnuts and industry overview with an up to the situation of the 2021 uh, season. Let's start with the general characteristics of the Chilean walnut production. Well, we are the main producer of the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we put the production in the regions with temperate Mediterranean climate. We will divide them in terms of analysis uh, in Northern, Central and Southern valleys. And the very specific characteristics of the Southern Hemisphere is that we harvest in counter season, along with our friends from Argentina and Australia, meaning that we harvest the early varieties in March and the Chander variety in April. Today, Chile, uh, has over 47,000 hectares planted with walnuts, about 6,000 are non-bearing, 39,000 are bearing, and about 2,000 hectares are considered old orchards that are not really very productive. Well, the country has an excellent combination of factors that allows great quality walnuts. We have the combination of climate, water, and soil. When it comes to the climate, we grow in the areas with temperate Mediterranean climate, we've seen uh, from north to south. We have a uh, water, water supply, numerous rivers, uh, winter rains and snow melting from the Andes. And we have an excellent soil, fertile soils with minerals and organic material. All of these three factors combined uh, help us produce great quality walnuts in Chile. What are the walnut growing regions? Uh, we have provinces in the in the north, in the center, and the south. Here you have the names of the provinces. We have Coquimbo, Valparaiso, the metropolitan region, O'Higgins, Maule, Ñuble, and Bio Bio. The northern valleys. For the northern valleys, we have two provinces. We have Coquimbo and Valparaiso. But Coquimbo has nearly 3,000 hectares planted with walnuts, while Valparaiso has around 7,000 hectares planted with walnuts. Here we have excellent climate, excellent soil, but, but we face a high risk of drought. At the moment, this area is representing about 21% of the surface planted. In this area, we uh, depend heavily on the levels of the water reservoirs and on the snowpack up in the mountains. The central valleys, here we have two provinces. We have the metropolitan area and the O'Higgins province. Uh, the central valleys today represent nearly 53% of the surface planted. Um, the factors here is we have good climate and good soil. We have enough water supply, but we have very low availability of land and very expensive land. Thus, the majority of the Chilean population lives in the live in the central area close to the capital city, Santiago. Now we go to the southern valleys. The southern valleys today represent 26% uh, of the surface planted. The provinces here are Maule, Ñuble, and Bio Bio. Uh, here we have excellent soil and uh, an excellent water supply. There is also good availability of land and to, uh, to grow bigger projects. However, we also face some disadvantages. We have higher rates of risk of frost in the spring, and also we have higher chance of rain during the harvest. What are the main characteristics of, and transformation in the last uh, years for Chilean walnut orchards? Well, we have moved from small to big plantations. Each time we have higher number of trees per hectare. We also have moved uh, practically completely from traditional to drip irrigation. Uh, we have achieved very good uh, yields per hectare, moving from low to high, to high yields to crops per hectare. It also, the tendency is that the uh, plantations are moving south as most of the new projects are taking place in the southern valleys. And we are also doing lots of research and development to adapt the, man the management to each of the valleys and the conditions needed in the, in the north, center, and south. Let's talk about the current crop, the crop 2021. We, are, we estimate a crop of, of uh, 140,000 metric tons. Uh, this is practically just a little bit bigger than last year. 
actually in the last three years we've had we have had quite uh, flat crops. We are not really growing uh, or increasing the crop in the expect numbers of, of, of uh, before years. And this has to do mainly with the uh, climate change and the severe drought that we have faced, I think in the last six, seven years in the country. Well, the 2021 crops is uh, about 88% of the crop is chanders and just 9% sirs and other 3% just other, other variety. What are the characteristics of the Chilean chanders is that they have a high percentage of extra light and are very easy to crack. While the sir variety has high kernel yield and it's an early variety for early shipments. Let's talk now about the processing. Well, we will start with the harvesting, hulling and drying. As I mentioned before, we harvest in the early varieties, meaning the sirs in the half of, second half of March, and then we harvest the chandlers in April. Most of the orchards have moved from manual to mechanical, uh, meaning that uh, most of the growers have bought uh, plenty of equipment imported from California and Europe. And also in the last uh, years, we have also professional processing providers for uh, hulling, drying, um, et cetera, et cetera. So here the, the tendency is that practically the orchards that are harvesting manually are disappearing and they are facing a, a big uh, shortage of labor. So uh, the future is that the Chilean walnut industry will be more and more mechanized every season. Um, the percentage of the crop that is exported as in shell or shellet, here you can see on this chart how it has been moving for from the last years. Um, if we see uh, 2020, the last season, practically half of the crop was exported as in shell and half exported as kernels. And uh, if we analyzed the previous years, we saw a tendency of a bigger percentage of the crop exported as in shell every year. We will see what happens in, in season 2021 as we have to consider the impact that the, the pandemic situation has had and also the lack of the, the, the lack of workers we are facing. So we will see in the coming months what happens with the 2021 crop in terms of product exported as in shell or shell. Well, the inchel walnuts, um, uh, Chile exports a, a, a big amount of inchel walnuts to different market. We have different categories that are explained in our um, quality standards. And also you can check the quality standards for all the details regarding the internal, external defects, size, color, etc. And the main products that we are exporting here is jumbo large or sorted by size, depending on the the destination markets. What we have seen for this season is that uh, we have seen ex ex strong, strong demand for initial walnuts and increasing prices uh, through the whole season. Let's have a look at the average sizes of the Chilean varieties, chandlers and serves. Uh, well, the Chile enjoys a very nice distribution of sizes for, for each of these two varieties. With, uh, with uh, very, very nice percentages of big sizes over 30, 34 millimeters, uh, both for the, for the chanders and the sirs. So we expect that this distribution of sizes will continue to be, to be so in the future. Of course, it will depend a lot depending on the conditions that each of the valleys will have. If some valleys suffer with uh, lack of water or severe drought, uh, probably they, they will harvest uh, smaller sizes, but all the horses that have enough water supply should have a very nice distribution of sizes as, as it has been in the last years. The shipments, here you can see the dynamics of the initial shipments. Uh, well, I, had, I have to mention that uh, this year has been very difficult to to, uh, to coordinate the logistics and the shipments for, for most of the destination markets due to the pandemic and COVID situation. Uh, the productivity of the shipping lines and the ports has been much lower. 
done, done in the previous year, creating lots of problems for the logistics. However, uh, we have been successful in, in shaping our, our crop and uh, we have seen uh, good numbers in terms of volume ship for, for, uh, for June, July, August. And so practically most of the volume that had to be shipped as initial has already been shipped or will be shipped yeah, this month in, in September. Also, most of the inventory that is still uh, for sale is, is kernel. So practically I can say, can say that the, the Chilean crop is uh, sold out in terms of initial shipments. Let's uh, move now to the machine crack. Well, again, here we are exporting different uh, types of machine crack moving from 90 down to 80, down to 20% halves and uh, quarters and pieces. Again, you can refer to the technical standards for all the, the details and the specifications. Uh, in terms of um, the, the machine cracking, well, uh, again, we have seen the same tendency that uh, we have seen a, a trend of uh, increasing prices throughout the, um, throughout the season. And also, uh, we will experience uh, more and more equipment being bought by packers than, uh, and processors as, as, as they have less uh, workers avail available for selecting uh, and so on. So also, I can anticipate that the, the, the industry for machine cracking will be more and more mechanized every time. And uh, Chile surely will need more sorting, laser and optical sorting equipment just to to produce as automatic as possible. The hand cracked, the hand crack has been a very strong uh, distinction of Chile. It has been part of our industry for, for many years. And the, the, especially the extra light hand crack are famous in, in all the markets. Well, this uh, business line is the one that suffered the most because of the pandemic. And uh, since it was very, very difficult to find labor to, to do the hand cracking, what uh, we are exporting here is uh, again we are exporting mainly halves and quarters and the colors extra light light. Again, you can refer to the technical standards if, if you want to know anything anything about the uh, internal uh, internal uh, color tolerances etc cetera, etc. Cetera. The average shell out rate here you can see the what has been the shell out rate for the chanders and the sirs uh, from 2016. And now until 2021, if, if we talk about the 2021 crop, the Chanders had an average shell out rate of 49.2, while the SERS had the average shell out rate of 56.3. This was uh, a little bit lower compared to 2020, but we hope to come back to higher, still is a very, very, very high kernel yield if you compare the same varieties cultivated in, in other origins, but we hope that uh, we will have better weather situations in, in crop 2022 to increase again the, the shell out rate for, for both varieties. What about the kernel shipments? Here you can see also the dynamics of the kernel shipments in the last seasons and uh, until August for, for season 2021. Uh, again, the, we have experienced uh, some delays in terms of the, the kernel shipments, mainly because of the lack of, of workers. But um, I, I think that uh, still there is very little inventory uh, still to be sold in the coming weeks. So I, I think that uh, most of the inventory for kernels will be shipped in September, October, November. And, and so I, I don't think that we will have any any carryover for the for the coming season. The destination markets, uh, well, no doubt, Europe is our main destination market at the moment. Practically 50% of the crop is exported to Europe. Uh, then we have uh, in the second place, Middle East and Africa with 21.8% uh, of the crop. Uh, then Asia and the Pacific Rim with 18.4% uh, 18 18 and Central South America with 9.2%. Uh,
top markets for the last season. Here I divided in Inshell and Cardinal markets. For Inshell, we have the number one market, Turkey, with about 20% uh, of the initial shipments. Then we have India with 17%, uh, Emirates with 10%, uh, Italy with 10%, Emirates with 8%, Vietnam with 7%, and the others with uh, 37%. When it comes to the kernel shipments, we have Germany as the top market with 27% uh, of the kernel shipments of season 2020. Then we have Brazil with 8%, Italy with 8%, Spain 7%, and Holland with 6%, while the other destinations represent about 43% of the kernel markets. What has been going on for the current season, uh, 2021 until August? Here you can see the country of destination if we consider initial equivalent in, in metric tons. Uh, number one market, this season has been Turkey, and we have seen uh, a big increase compared to, to last year. Then the surprise, now a second market, India, with a very, very big increase compared to last season. Uh, Italy, number three, with uh, also we have an increase, but we are practically at the same volume exported in 2019. Then we have Spain, uh, with the numbers going up, uh, Emirates is still recovering from uh, more volume than last year, but uh, a very low volume com compared to the record exported to the Emirates in 2019. Then the, in Germany, we have seen a big drop, uh, especially because of the big, big retailers uh, were very slow buying, buying um, kernels. So I think that this number will go up in the in the in the months of September, October, and November, as the as the Europeans uh, come back to the market to, to buy most of the remaining inventory of kernels, and then the other markets are Vietnam, the Morocco, Holland, Brazil, China, France, Ecuador, Belgium, and the and the UK. Well, one of the very important characteristics of of the Chilean one of the industry and, and the export uh, industries of Chile is that we have uh, the help of ProChile in, in most of the countries. ProChile is the government agency uh, in charge of helping uh, the, the industries to export and develop markets around the world. ProChile has at the moment 57 commercial offices in, in 45 countries with presence in Africa, Africa, Asia, Oceania, Central America, Europe, Middle East, North and South America. It's very important that uh, if we talk sp specifically about China, Chile has three offices in mainland, mainland China, in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. So if you want to know anything uh, about Chilean exports and the products exported from Chile, you can go to, you can uh, contact the Chile offices in, uh, in, in the different countries or, or or the, the office nearest to you, and they would be happy to provide you all the information and help that you could need. Now, I'll come to the end of the presentation. I'd like to hi hi highlight the main conclusions. Well, our industry will continue with the growth that we have experienced in the, in the last year. So we still can anticipate um, bigger crops for the, for the coming season. Uh, our walnut is very well positioned because of the quality. Uh, we enjoy high quality, good color, and nice flavor, high meat yield, and a remarkable size. And also what is very important that uh, we can supply fresh walnuts to the Northern Hemisphere when the, the Northern origins uh, don't have it. So, so we are the perfect partner for the counter season. And, uh, and we are, uh, and we will remain to be the main supplier of walnuts from the Southern Hemisphere for 40 years to come. So we will be, we will be very happy to, to, uh, to provide uh, fresh walnuts in the coming, in the coming seasons and uh, also to keep on with the, the very nice characteristics of the Chilean walnuts and Chilean quality. Well, it has been a pleasure to deliver this presentation today. Thank you very much.
And unfortunately, we couldn't meet in person again for this uh, conference 2021, but I'm looking forward to meeting you in person for the next event in, in the coming year. If you have any doubt, please write me an email and I would be happy to answer that. Thank you very much and goodbye.